Hey guys, Nick here from Velocity Trading, and I just want to go over my trades from yesterday. Um, you had one of my better days of the year yesterday. Um, made about 20, just over 20R on the day yesterday. I did take three trades yesterday, um, and I want to dive into that. And then I'll go over maybe a little bit of today too. Um, it's been an awesome week to start off uh, December trading, the final month of the year for 2020. All right, so let's dive into things. Let me go over. Let me go over EVK. I'll go over the two the two plays individually. Um, so EVK yesterday. Um, both of these plays, you know, were uh, China names. EVK had no news, right? So this thing had no news. So. Kind of that notion of, oh, you know, if there's no news, it can't run. is It's honestly garbage. I've been saying that forever, guys. You know, you know news does not move plays. You know, demand does. Volume does. You know, you could have a play run 1,000% with no news. I've seen it happen before. I've seen stocks that were going delisted run four or 500%. You know, RTNB a few years ago did that. So, you know, I mean, it, that whole notion, guys, is, is just, you know, to me, it's just kind of, you know, BS. So, uh, EVK, again, proving that, too. You know, this thing went on a nice squeeze yesterday on EVK. So, we had a 4 million afloat stock here on EVK. Let me just pull up something real quick. Uh, I just want to, you know, pull up my pre-market uh, analysis on them. Where did it go? Where's the watch list? Uh, Yeah, so uh, it's just from yesterday morning. Uh, EVK it was four million float stock, Chinese uh, company. No dilution, so you know, no supply um, as far as filings. At high pre-market volume, was in multiple float rotations in the pre-market, which we like to look for. Watching for a wash up and squeeze pattern if price action and volume confirm. So, you know, I did my you know pre-market analysis on it. New demand was there, new volume was there, was in float rotation pre-market, which we like to look for. Um, you know, it did go on a bit of an overextended move here in the pre-market. So you always got to be a little careful when, you know, makes a really big pre-market move, especially, you know, you got some longs bagged up here who are chasing this thing at the top. Again, you could have some short stuck there. Um, but like, I like to see that post opening trap first before we go on that, that post squeeze move. Um, which was perfect, right? We did it perfectly here. You know, had a morning pop, you know, shorts like the short that, you know, that morning pop, that strength versus pre-market highs. Um, so you got that morning pop there into, you know, 630s, which was great. You know, came back down, retested, failed. So it looked super weak all morning. You know, another retest failed, another retest failed. So rejecting a few times here, but it's still holding up. You know, I had a backside line around five bucks on it. Yes, it did crack that $5 line a little bit. But ultimately held right so that what i have that backside line is it's kind of an area for me where you know as long as the stock's not trading below it and staying heavy below that line and i'm interested in the overall name i won't take it off radar right so evk never really broke below five and and, and stayed below five for a period of time where you know i never took it off radar so i was always keeping an eye on it you know as long as it held above that five dollar line and then what I was looking for was some sort of swiping action, some sort of heavy volume come in um, on a swipe, uh, which exactly what it did here. It did it perfectly, and the timing couldn't have been better. I put it out on Twitter yesterday too, um, watching for a wave two or wave three pattern on EVK or Lizzie. I like both of these names for a long yesterday. Obviously, if volume and price action confirm, um, which it did here. So EVK, here's my trade on it. Um, got in right around a little over 11 on that swipe candle. You know, I got long full size there, and I was full size on this trade. I was very, again, some trades, you know, you may have stronger conviction. Other than I was, you know, my conviction was pretty strong on this one. I was I was willing to size up, you know, big on this one, um, which is in return turned out to be an awesome win for me. So got in right on this candle right here. Um, or is it, I think it was this one, my bad. I think it was this one. Um, I think it was this candle right here. I got in there right around like 560. So I had like a 565 average, I believe. It was in the 560s. Um, and my stop loss was right below this 540 mark. I think if it recracked 540, it was probably done. So I was risking about 25 cents. So I was risking about like 2.5 R. Again, accounting for maybe some slippage. Could have been up to 3 R. So, you know, it was 
you know, I was risking 2.5 R again, you know, could have been 2.7, 2.8 or if it went the other way, but I knew the upside was there. I, I, I knew we would probably at least get probably over the highs and get up over pre-market highs. So I was really thinking we can get up to, you know, high sixes, maybe sevens. Um, and again, the sevens was awesome. You know, I was really, this is kind of my target here over the high. So sold into strength over the high, sold some there like 670s, 680s. And then I sold the rest there near that 750 mark. So really awesome trade for me on EVK. I mean, this was a 15 hour win, one of my bigger wins of the year. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was awesome, right? I mean, you know, it's nice when a trade you know, really works out per plan. And, I, and this is a per plan trade. It wasn't a reactive trade. You know, I planned for this in the pre-market, looking for a wash, trap, and squeeze pattern. You know, looking for that wave two or wave three pattern looking for swipes midday on heavy volume and we got that on evk so this thing worked out perfectly um the you know, volume was there price action was there um really overall clean trade for myself here on uh on evk so uh yeah i mean what more can i say about this one ended up kind of chopping around uh throughout the day um you know had that one more little clear out move came into the highs squeezed out some more you know nervous shorts over five eight excuse me stuff back down and then you know the algo manipulator is kind of working out his exit all day um throughout into the close so had some nice backside set in there too um after that clear out move stayed heavy and you know it was a nice fade from there and then obviously today you know just uh you know big gap down with some chop so yeah, I mean that's how these plays work, right? They 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 get it nice and liquid pre-market. They soak the float, trap it, squeeze out shorts, and then they they sell it off before you know the market close. So that's how these uh these plays work. How these you know manipulators like to work. And uh, you know Lizzie kind of the same thing yesterday. So did trade. They did have two trades on Lizzie yesterday. Now Lizzie, let's pull up my you know pre-market um analysis on lizzie so lizzie 20 million of floats the float was a little bit higher um it is an ev play as we know electrical vehicle plays have been the hottest trend of 2020 by far i mean we see you know you see ev plays go absolutely wild this year along with you know cryptos coming back a little bit too um so these have been very hot so had high pre-market volume, right? So the float was high, but it had that pre-market volume that made up for it. Um, so I like the wave two or wave three on it. Obviously, again, if volume and price action can confirm, which it did. Um, so let me pull up this Lizzie chart um, from yesterday. And again, so the pre-market volume was you know there. Um, you know, it traded over twenty million in the pre-market, so the volume made up for that big float. And again, 20 million is a little bit bigger, but again, if the volume is there, it can make a move, especially with these EV ones. I mean, you know, retail longs love to chase these ones, and for whatever reason, shorts just love to get squeezed on these EVs plays this year. Um, it's just been, you know, a trend we've been seeing. So um, my first entry on it, my first trade on it, um, was kind of on that late wave one again. You know, ended up squeezing there, wave three, which honestly I preferred a lot better. This first trade... Um, I didn't really go too big on it. Um, second trade, I didn't go too big either. But the first trade was kind of iffy on it. It was more so like a B setup for me. Um, it was still solid. I mean, it had the nice little swipe there. Um, as you guys can see, oop, I, I misplaced the chart. Um, yeah, so I got in there right around like 450-ish, um, near 460. Again, came close. My target was 530s, 550 area. It just came up like 10 cents short on it. Um, I honestly probably would have sold half if I had bigger size over five just to preserve some profits, lock some in. But ended up failing, got stopped out there, made like you know 0.5 R, you know, a few bucks on it. Um, so you know, that was kind of a scratch trade for me on Lizzie that first one, and then I waited for later in the day for a much cleaner setup. Um, you know, this thing had a nice little opportunity later in the day, around like 1.30. It was kind of basing. I felt like I should have died off by now. Kind of felt like they were setting up for like that end of day squeeze out into a dump. Um, so I took a stab on it. Took a stab around 450s, you know, 455-ish, you know. Um, was playing 425 as my risk. 
I think I put it out in Discord yesterday too when I got in. So I'm trying to see what time it was. So yeah, I got in. Oops. They yeah, got in, you know, 455 versus 430, not 425, excuse me. So 455 versus 430, risking about 25 cents. Um, yeah, um, so I got in right around 130-ish. Um, looking to sell over the highs, ideally 530, 550 range. We'll give the strength if it happens, if it looks stuffy. So yeah, it's just, you know, some thoughts from yesterday. <laughs> We're just kind of joking around about stop twits is going nuts. We're just kind of playing around. <laughs> I think it was funny after I posted this comment. I think it like that's when I had that big you know swipe move. Yep. So like literally like a second after, that was pretty funny. Um, so yeah, we we're just having a good time on this. Yesterday was a fun day. Um, you know, great opportunity on the long side yesterday. Some some awesome trades. And yeah, you guys see I sold into the five forties right there into that swipe move. So pretty much locked it all in there. Five forties and look at that big rug pull there. Um, right before end of day right so same thing right manipulators squeezing it over the highs squeezing out shorts and then just dumping into the clothes right i mean it's had to like to operate right sometimes they'll get that after hour squeeze but uh you know this time we saw a uh end of day sell off here on on lizzie so made about five r on that trade nice wave three pattern for us um and yeah i mean today gap down not too much going on today on this one on Lizzie. And yeah, guys, that's it. I mean, that was yesterday. Um, today, today we saw HGSH. HGSH was a little bit tougher. Six million of float stock. Had really, really good volume. Still has really good volume. Um, we had no news. China play. Um, you know, I like the wash wrap and squeeze pattern on it. But again, the price action and the whippiness on this one was very tough on this one on HGSH. Um, just was kind of waiting for like a cleaner setup. To me, this was very fast the way this developed here. And by the time I saw the swipe happen, I didn't even have my orders out. So kind of that same liquidity trap. I forgot to go over it on, on EVK. Um, ah, I forgot to go. Let me see. Do I still have it here? Yeah, I don't have it, but actually all oh, I do here. Yeah. So you kind of see what they do. Sometimes they'll go lower liquidity, lower liquidity, lower liquidity, and then it just ramps up. They swipe it up on big volume to kind of trap the shorts there. Same thing here, right? You know, lower volume, lower volume, lower volume. And then they next candle, 800K, and they swipe it on up. So sometimes you see they'll make that same trap. And they'll be on. You'll see that, you know, happen a lot, actually. You know, them kind of make that liquidity trap there um, before they rip it on up. So they did that here. And when I saw this happen, someone mentioned it. And I didn't even have my orders typed out on HGSH. Um, it was just so quick. You maybe have 30 seconds there of solid opportunity. To me, this setup wasn't as high quality. Um, you know, it was just super quick and everything was happening super fast there. Just didn't, it wasn't really developing how I wanted it to. Um, wasn't as clean as like EVK yesterday. So again, I just kind of sat out on it and I missed that. Maybe I would have taken that smaller size probably but it's still solid i mean you went up from uh you know 450s to you know 540s i mean that's still solid but very fast one again you can't catch them all um you know on, on hgsh maybe i'll watch this one in the afternoon maybe like 2 3 p.m uh, 2 p.m ish you know see how it's looking later um but uh yeah, I mean, this was that, um, you know, 80 million shares on it, great volume on a 6 million afloat. So clearly volume was there. Um, the prints were big on it. Baseline volume was big. Again, the only reason, you know, I didn't take it was price action was a little whippy and it just developed very quick, too fast for me on this one. Um, you know, I like to see a little bit more consolidation and like a cleaner swipe. Just was everything was happening fast on this one. And plus, you know, after I have a big day, like yesterday, I had one of my bigger days of the year. Um, the following day, sometimes I get a little too cool. I get it too, a little too lax and I end up, you know, kind of firing away on some names, take some poor quality setup. So I came in today saying, Nick, I'm going to take a very, uh, you know, defensive approach today. It's a Friday too. Um, I'm only going to take a quality, quality setup. Not that HGSH was a bad setup. This wasn't, you know, super quality for me. Like EVK was on the long side. Um, so I, didn't, I ended up then taking it, um, you know, is what it is. You know, I don't really 
apt to catch every single play. Um, but yeah, I mean, we saw this today. Then we saw PPSI. Um, this one, you know, went on a nice rip a few months ago. Um, you know, a little bit of a different gap today. It has some bags. They also had an offering since float a little bit bigger. They had like a nine million dollar hidden ATM too. So some supply on this one. So, again, wasn't the same gap as last time. I didn't really trust this one as much. Uh, I liked HGSH a little bit better on the long side if I were to play it. So, yeah, ended up squeezing out a little bit. Didn't have that, that crazy vertical move up to, like, 650. Ended up selling off. Got heavy. Um, and that was that one. So, yeah, so that was kind of the last two days. It's been an interesting start to December. We're seeing some good volume, some good action. So, I'm definitely excited to see what's going to be in store for us for the rest of the month um yeah and i'm looking forward for it looking to finish off the year strong it's been a you know nice start up you know 20 r on the month um some good stuff and uh we'll see what's in store for us coming up so i hope you guys enjoyed this recap um and i'll see you guys soon i'm out peace